Frame it live. Frame it and define it. Frame it and define it. This is such an exciting <laughs> night. You're going to learn how to frame your gorgeous face and define it in a way that is just going to blow you away. So we're so excited that you're here. Um, we're sorry we're a few minutes late, um, technical difficulties, but we're here now. Um, so tonight's going to run the, somewhat the same way. I know many of you have been on um, a few weeks in a row. I want to give a shout out to Jen. She's been on a few weeks, and as of an hour ago, she decided to join our Mary Kate family, which is exciting. Yay! Yay! Um, so tonight, as always, please let us know that you're here. Say hi to your consultant because we do look at those and we put your name into our spa drawing for every single, um, every time you come to one of our events up until our spa drawing in September. So you could have a ton of entries, which is really fun. And if you decide to host a get together with um, a few of your friends, your name goes in multiple times. So if you want to do something like a makeup class and have one of us come with you or virtually come with you, we can do that too. So that's a lot of fun. So don't forget to say hi to your consultant so we know that you are here. Okay, we have a special treat for you tonight. We have two special treats. So at the end of our Frame It, Define It class, um, we are going to have a little after party to kind of share with you a little bit about what this Mary Kay business is all about. Like that is so much fun to learn. And this way you can just stay on and listen. And we'll talk about that more at the end. But I wanted to let you know that that's going to be our little after party tonight. And then we have a second special treat. You're just going to have to stick around to see it because Sandy Brown is going to be showing you something special. So you have to stick around. It's going to be really something we all want to know how to do. Um, but none of us probably do know how to do it. So anyways, I am Karen. I probably should have told you that in the beginning. And I have been building my business for 13 years now. I started, I was an elementary school teacher turned full-time Mary Kay. And I'm so excited. So I wanted to share with you tonight, girls, maybe we could share some of the fun things um, that we know about Mary Kay. So like, so I so for example, like Mary Kay has so many different symbols and some of them are right here on the screen, but they have so many different symbols <laughs> in my background. Um, but one of the symbols that they have is a pink Cadillac. And if you've ever seen a pink Cadillac or you know about the pink Cadillac, put a car emoji in the comment section so that way we can give you um when we're looking at comments for prizes later so the pink cadillac i know you may know about it but you know it came about because mary Kay, she's just such a great lady she decided to go to the lincoln dealership because she wanted to purchase a lincoln and paint it pink and make it the face of her company well the guy at the lincoln dealership said where's your husband and she said, it's just me. And he said, oh, pretty little lady, why don't you go home and get your husband? And then you can come back and we'll get a car. Well, Miss Mary Kay, you know, she's independent. So she walked out the door and went across the street to the Cadillac dealership where the guy was more, the salesman was more than happy to have her purchase a car. I'll, and she walked in with her compact and she said, I want a Cadillac. And he said, OK. And she said, I want it paint. I want you to paint it pink like this compact. Well, he thought it was kind of weird. He goes, I don't know. You're going to get it painted pink and you're going to want to turn it back. And she said, no, everyone's going to want this car. And that's how the pink Cadillac was born. So sad, Lincoln dealership. <laughs> you didn't know you had a powerhouse in front of you. But girls, if you have a symbol that you want to share, why don't you introduce yourself and then just share something that's related to our Mary Kay. Okay. Sure. Uh, Go ahead, Ryan. Go ahead. Ryan. Okay. All right, I'll go. So hi everyone, I'm Ryan, um, and I've been building my business for six years. Um, well, what I did prior to Mary Kay and currently still um, is I, so prior to Mary Kay, I was a, more, a client coordinator for a mortgage company, um, and I was my dad's office manager for his construction company. So I'm still his office manager, um, and I still work my Mary Kay business full time, so I love it. Um, and the next little symbol that I'm gonna share with you is the red jacket. So drop a little, we don't have a red jacket emoji, but we need to have one. So jacket, red, top, whatever you have. So um, the red jacket is actually like the first uniform in Mary Kay. And it's the first like step in leadership. So it's great because who like when you have to go to an event or something, you're stressed out about what to wear. So at this level, Mary Kay gets to dress you. So it's awesome. So 
What a red jacket is, is it's when you have a, you're a small team, you have three consultants. Um, and so the, the red jacket came about because Mary Kay was at going to a Cardinals game um, in the 70s. And the director there at the time had all of her um, star team builders wear red jackets um, because she just thought it would be nice. And the Cardinals are, um, they have red in their uniform. So Mary yeah. Kay like saw the sea of reds on the field when she was throwing out the first pitch at the game and thought that was like amazing. She loved how it looked. So she decided to take the idea back to the company and the red jacket position was born. And it's like the official first uniform in Mary Kay. So it's awesome. <laughs> I love it. Well, we have a little feedback. So um, yeah. Brian, do you want, if you want to mute us because it's a little sure. feedback on Sandy's mic. Okay. Can you hear me now? Okay. All right. Okay. So my name is Sandy. I've been building my Mary Kay business for 26 years and I keep looking at myself here. And just so you guys know, um, we didn't forget to do our other eye. That's part of our training tonight, but it looks so weird as I'm looking at myself. So I just wanted to explain that in case someone for thinks that we forgot to do our other eye or like, what are these girls going to teach me? I don't know. <laughs> so we are going to teach you some fun tricks tonight. So, but what I wanted to share with you is when I first started Mary Kay, I was super duper shy. So I love that I get to share one of my Mary Kay symbols um, with you tonight because it really meant a lot to me when I first came into Mary Kay. And most of you can see the pink roses behind me and the pink roses behind Ryan. And the rose is actually a symbol of Mary Kay. So Mary Kay always told us that this company is actually the best self-improvement course that we actually get paid to take. So you come in as this tight little rosebud, she said this tight little rose, and then you blossom into this beautiful, full blossom rose. By the time you've really got some training with Mary Kay and you've met some people and you've come out of your comfort zone. So I know that Mary Kay forced me out of my comfort zone. Those of you that are in a comfort zone think that it feels good, but you really probably deep down want to venture outside of it. And it's scary, but it feels so invigorating when you actually do something that you're afraid to do. So that's why Mary Kay, you is the symbol of the rose in case you guys didn't know that so that's my favorite symbol that is so fun and i wonder if that's why the bee is part of it because the rose and the bees <gasps> that's really cool too yeah you know so oh the bee you guys did so the bee really quick because i love that symbol that is because the bumblebee if you ever noticed their body is so big and their wings are so small that they shouldn't be able to fly aerodynamically their body's too heavy but they can anyways so when you achieve a b and mary k that is the symbol of you flying in your business so um but that's just some fun stories we wanted to share with you because we love talking a little bit about that so um, we are going to get started with our training tonight, which is going to be really fun and exciting. You're going to learn a lot of stuff. Um, I'm going to get started with our first segment, which is browse. Which oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Wrong <laughs> it's just us. Just go ahead and fix your screen and do what you, or put on what you need. Okay. Oh, it's all me. Okay. So what I started, we all started with one brow on. So I backwards so this is the one i'm going to show you tonight this is the one i already did so this works even when you're not freshly plucked or waxed too so i'm going to be using two tools tonight the first one is going to be the brow definer the precision precision i can't talk precision brow definer and the second one is going to be the um brow volumizer so they each have a different function they can each be used separately or they could be used together. So you can layer and build depending on what you need. So the definer is going to do just that. It's going to define your brow line. So I'm going to tell you how you do that. So and I have a mirror over here. So if I'm looking to the side, that's what I'm doing because it's kind of hard to think. So you're going to use your brow definer and you're going to first map your eye. Eye mapping is important because you have to know where to put your filler. So you're going to start by putting your definer, <laughs> not there. You're going to, I'm, okay, let me look over here for a sec. So I'm not, okay. So you're going to put it right next to your nose and go straight up. And that's going to tell you where the end point near your nose is supposed to be. Then you're going to take it at an angle, about a 45 degree angle, right over your pupil. And then that is where the arch is going to be. And if you have the brow definer, 
you know, I was going to map it out really obnoxiously for you tonight, but I think you get the point. So if you map up your eye, you could actually take your definer and you could poke a little, not poke, you could place a little dot as to where your arch should be. That way, when you are feathering in your definer, you know exactly, it's like a connect the dots. So, and then you map out the tail of your eyebrow by using your definer. And then you are going to come right at the tip of your eye like that. And then that is where you're going to define the tail of your um, your eyebrow. So we're going to start with our precision liner. Okay. So this is a hair by hair definition, just so you know. So when you apply this, I'm going to map my one side. I should have done the other side. Sorry. So I'm going to quickly map out where I'm supposed to be on each point of my face. So you can see what I'm doing. Uh, it just kind of helps to keep where you're supposed to be. Okay. Then you're going to take your definer. It is, um, they come in different shades. Obviously, we don't all have the same brow colors. And it's, you twist it to bring, oh, you can't see. You twist it to bring it out or down. And it's creamy. So you don't want to create this, right? So you're not supposed to define and have this really thick, heavy line going across your brow. You want to do it um, hair by hair. So you're feathering out the strokes to fill in. So I'll see if I can move my mirror up here so you can kind of see what I'm doing. So I'm starting at the first point that I mapped out and I want to line where I'm trying to get to, like the definition I'm trying to create. Okay. And then you want to bring it down to your tail. I know it's like a movie star here. Okay. So you want to bring it down and you're defining that line here by little light feathery strokes. You don't want to be heavy with that. So you want to just go ahead and create the line that you're trying to define. It's like a rhyme all the time when you're with me. And I know the girls are backstage laughing right now. Okay, so then I've got my define. So this is the definer where you're doing here. If you want to stop there, that's perfect. If that's what you want. Um, you know, especially if you're a little PC in your brows, you can kind of piece it in. And I'm not going to lie because we're all friends here. I haven't plucked or waxed my eyebrows in a while, so they're going to be a little bit fuller because i got to fill in that, okay? That's just a little secret. Don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. So now I'm going to put in my volumizer, and I'm going to try to help fill in some of that spaciness. We all have different brows. That's why we have different tools. So the volumizer comes. It almost looks like a, um, a, mas a mini mascara wand. So the first thing you're going to do is you can comb out your brows a little bit. Um, we have a, the tool with a little spoolie thing on the end. And then you can spool it out to help. And then you can take your volumizer. This is real-time learning, girls. Real-time learning. Okay, so now I'm going to um, try to, I'm going to fill it in a little bit. So you want to start little light strokes. Now, this is really nice, too, especially if you have curly hair, um, because curly people with curly hair have curly eyebrows, and they kind of like want to fling out in all different directions. So this is going to hold all day. Both of these products are going to hold all day, and this will help keep those stubborn hairs in place. So not only are you getting the definition on it, you're also kind of putting like a little bit of a hairspray, but it's not hairspray. It's just kind of keeping it in its place. So I went a little bit far down on there, but I wanted to... I think you get the point. We're filling them in. So let's see. <gasps> look at that. It like, and you can create as much definition in your eye as you want, which is really great. So that is our brow um, precision liner and our vowel. <laughs> I can't talk. I'm not going to try. And then our volumizer. So that is um, the brow tips for you. So that's the start of your frame. And you'll see if one of the girls, I think they all did their brows backstage um, and they're back. But it really does define. You know, You're like a real person. Yeah, <laughs> a real person. Amazing. So, <laughs> super fun. That's it's fun. so hard to do it on camera, but I, I think that was a good, uh, you know, you really, you want to have brows on because it frames you and that's important. So after frames, we are going to go on to. We're going to go on to. Our face shapes. We're doing shapes. Face yeah. shapes. Yeah. You want to show us some face shapes? 
Yes. Yeah. All right. So, um, oh, let me mute you guys. Well, I'm gonna you didn't pay enough money for this training. <laughs> <laughs> this well, is while she's, looking, uh, and while she's looking, I'll oh, while she's looking, I'm gonna talk to you. Hello, hello. This is so funny. Okay, well, listen, while you guys are gone, I put on a fake eyelash. So that's why I'm going to be teaching you a little trick in a little bit. But Danita is actually going to share with us some framing it in your face. So Danita, while, while since you're here, can you introduce yourself for us? Okay. And then tell us about our definition for defining our face for highlighting, contouring, and taking okay. five years off of our face. Okay, great. Um, first of all, I'm Donita Cove, and I've been building my business in Mary Kay for 29 years at this point. Um, long time. <laughs> but anyway, um, okay, let me go ahead and get into talking about doing the contouring. That's what you're, that's what we're doing, right? At this point, I apologize for getting in late. Yep, okay. and I'm going to pull up the guide for you so they're going to be able to see everything. And we're uh, going to come off camera and do our face as well. So we'll come back on and you'll see us look brighter and lighter and happier. <laughs> okay. And then I get to go off and finish doing mine because I'm not doing it either. <laughs> oh yeah. You can oh, show yeah. them while you're doing it. Yeah. That's what Karen oh, okay. just did with her eyebrows. Them. Okay. I just won't have my eyebrows in yet. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> All right. All right. That sounds good. Okay. So as soon as Ryan gets that up, what we're going to talk about is both highlighting um, or doing uh, blush and doing contouring on your face. Okay, great. Thank you. That's perfect. So there's um, when you do the contouring and apply your blush, um, everything um, goes around your facial shape. So there are five different facial shapes and there there's the square facial shape. And I know that sounds strange, but there really truly are more square facial shapes. And then there's the oval, which I'm sure everyone's familiar with and the round face uh, heart shaped. Um, a lot of it has to do with the hairline and everything, and then also the longer face. So the contouring, first of all, we have great contouring things because we have so many different foundations, different shades, and you usually want to do contouring with um, about two to three shades darker than your normal foundation shade. Now, you don't necessarily do it with... Um, with foundation, you can do it with a cream to powder, which I realize is kind of a foundation, or you can um, use uh, powders, but they have to be something that's really going to hold. Okay, so um, um, let's talk about the square. Well, let's see, the first one that is on there, and I actually have that. It's a little bit different. The first one on there looks like it's the oval face. Okay, so the oval face, you're going to do contouring by um, putting the brush here and I think what I'll do is I'll just grab a brush to make it a little easier so when you're working with your contouring you're going to be doing this part under here you can see the dark places on the diagram and that's where the contouring takes place all right so that's for the oval face all right because what that's going to do is it's going to give you a little more um, um, structure here in the cheekbone area and so it changes the way the side of your face looks all right and then the next one is going to be the round face. And the round face is in a couple places. Um, you're going to put contouring right up here, okay? And then underneath the cheekbones. And sometimes the way to find your cheekbones is to actually smile, okay? So you're gonna smile and then you'll do this, all right? And then um, the next one is going to be the oval face we did the round face so the next one that we'll do is thank you is the heart shaped the heart shaped is very different there's actually three places that you're going to contour for the for the heart shaped face and the first place is the corners of the forehead which are going to be right in here okay the very corners of your forehead now, obviously, I'm not putting anything on right now because I'm showing you where to place all of them, okay? And then you're going to do the hollows of your cheekbone, all right? So right in here, all right? And then you're going to do beneath the chin. See, the whole purpose of the contouring is to um, give you more of a perfectly um, oval face, um, almost 
not not really square, but um, perfect oval there. Okay. And then the next one we're going to do is I'm trying to see which one is next on there. Okay. And that's going to be okay. We already did the tips of the forehead. Okay, that's the square face. All right. Did I miss one here? Um, let me see. Tip of the chin and top of the, oh, the long face. The long face. I and then I'm going to do just the tip of the chin a little bit. Okay. So what that do, does is it brings um, it brings the size of your face down. So this becomes um, more of the attention focus right here. Because see what happens is, is when you don't do contouring, then when people are looking and looking for your eyes, what happens sometimes is um, because of the shape of your face, you know, it's distracting. So that's why you do contouring to shape your face so that when people look into your face, then they're going to be looking right at you. Okay. All right. So that's contouring. And like I said, with Mary Kay products, um, you can use a cream to powder um, or just a, a really a, a darker, um, you're not really supposed to use a bronzer. So just focus on cream to powder or a much darker foundation, all right, if you're comfortable with that. So, um, so that's our contouring. And then we're going to talk about highlighting, all right? So highlighting is going to add um, light to different areas through, um, you know, application. So we're going to go back to the square face again. And you'll apply your uh, blush. We're talking about apply, applying blush, okay, versus your contour. So let's see. I can hold it up. I think I've got, oh, okay, good. Thank you. All right. So on a square face, there are going to be circles on your cheeks. Uh, can we, let's see. Let me go ahead and back up. I'll do the oval face first. Okay. So we're going to do the apples of your cheeks. Can you see the pink on the diagram there? And if you can't see the pink on the diagram, it's just right in here. And again, you can smile. When you ever you want to do anything specifically with your cheeks, it's it's um, easier to just smile because then your cheeks are going to be right there. Okay, so you smile real big, and then your cheek color is going to be right here. All right. And then the next one we're going to do is the round face. Okay, you have it up there. Okay, good. Okay, so you're going to do 45 uh, degrees, the cheeks to the temples. Okay, so your cheeks are right here and your temples are here. So you're going to be going like this. And that's what's great about this chart. Uh, Mary Kay even has a chart like this that you can follow. Okay, but put your cheek color here. All right, and then the next one we're going to do is the a square face. Is it the square face? Um, oh, wait a minute. We already did that, right? Okay. Hang on just a second. Can we do the, okay. Can we do the so we, heart shaped? Do we have a heart shaped? Okay. The heart shaped one, um, you're going to smile and you'll see your cheeks here. And you can see in the diagram, what you're going to do is write in the, um, we're going to do the apples of the cheeks, okay? Right, right here. And so when you smile, this is called your apples because you know how an apple is big and full. Okay, so that's why it's called your apple, and you're going to place it right here on, on the apple of your cheeks. And I don't think we did the long face, which is next. And that one is very different because you've got so much length here that, that we're trying to um, change it between... Um, you know, so people focus on your eyes as well as your face will soften into a more of an oval. Okay. So what you're going to do here is actually take the, the color straight out. Now, let me suggest something to you. Make sure, of course, always, um, it's better to start off with a brush that's not totally loaded. Okay. So that when you start, um, you can start out here and bring it in towards your nose. You don't want to come too close to your nose and then bring it in from the side here. And you want your color to be, and a lot of times if when you're doing cheek color, it's easier to go from side to side and that way you've got the, the exact same amount of color going on. Okay. And which one did we not do yet? Um, 
We did the long face with the horizontal stripes, I believe. And we did the heart shape just now. We did the round um, one because that's the 40, uh, 45 degree one going up from your nose area right up here. And then, um, oh, I don't know that we did the oval. Do we do the oval? Okay. The oval we do from apples of the cheeks and then sweeping towards the temples. So the apples here and sweeping up. All right. And I think that's, I think that that covered all of them there. All right. Yep. Okay. Did we get did. them all in? You did. Yep. You did. Okay. Great. I'm going to bring us all on camera to okay. show you our looks. Oh, we have color. We have Very color. We nice. look brighter. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Love it. Okay. Awesome. All right, well, I'm going to show you about lips next. So I'm going to take the other girls away, and they're going to do their lips as um, I'm doing mine live with you. So we'll be back. Well, they'll be back. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm going to talk to you about our lip liner and um, our matte lipstick. So um, lips are really important, um, especially like when you're doing um, anything on camera because you like look how washed out I look without any lipstick on. So I always like to do a bright lipstick, but this these rules apply for um, for any type of a lipstick. So you wanna start with your lip liner. And what I love about our Mary Kay lip liner is that it's creamy and waterproof, um, which is great because most things that are waterproof, you usually are drying for your lips. But this is retractable and it never needs like sharpening. So there's actually, you would sharpen it in this little like top part here. Um, so it's amazing. So today I'm using a red lip liner and um, red stiletto lipstick because it's my favorite. I love it. So um, when you're doing your lip liner, what you want to start with first is um, at your Cupid's bow, you want to do an X. So I'm going to show you here. So you want to start with doing an X, which will be I'm gonna use my mirror, but I'm gonna look at the camera. So you do it like that. You just do an X. So you look a little crazy when you're doing your lip liner, but it's totally okay. So after you start with your X at your Cupid's bow, you're gonna go down here and do exactly like a little half line centered so that you have your lips centered. Now, if your lips are like sagging, you would, um, or a little saggy, you would start lining up. Now, when you're doing liner, yes, you're lining your lips, but you don't wanna do like one line um, because that's where your skin will skip sometimes and you wanna do sh short feathery strokes. Um, and a good tip is put your um, pinky like on your chin to rest it so that you kind of have um, something for your liner to, to um, rest on. And when you're doing a red lip, you wanna make sure your lip liner is perfect because it's a bold lip, so you wanna be good. So I'm just doing short strokes going from the bottom up. Same thing with down here. Now, if you want your lipstick to last you all day, completely fill in your lips. Oh, I forgot. Um, well, I wanted to tell you about something that you're going to find out last week. So normally when I always put on my lipstick, I always put on lip primer, but I forgot today. So, but you're going to learn more about this next week. So I guess it's a good thing I didn't use it, but it's a great product. So you're going to want to tune in next week to hear more. All right. So I'm just filling in here. Kind of looks like I have my lipstick on already. Now, if you are a girl that um, rolled your lipstick after you put it on, we don't want to do that. That's not anything you want to do. You want to just like tap. Go well, like this. So I'm using our um, gel semi-matte red stiletto. It's my favorite. I love it. Perfect color for year round. Um, what I love about this lipstick is it's matte, but it's infused with avocado and sunflower oil. So it's like creamy feeling and hydrating, but it doesn't um, dry your lips out because who doesn't love a matte finish? But usually when some things are matte, they're drying, but not with this, not with this lipstick. And once you fill in your lips, 
and you line them, you can't go wrong with your lipstick. All right. And lipstick really helps to make you um, look alive, look lively, colorful. Um, it gives you, it just brightens your face. Um, it's so great. So this is our red stiletto, perfect color. This is a great holiday color, but it's really great for um, all year round. And what also that I love about our lip matte lipsticks is you can see at the top, it's clear. You can see what your lipstick is. So if you got a million of them in your bag, you know what your colors are. So I'm gonna bring the girls on. So you can see, and we're all wearing red stiletto for you to see how different it looks on all of us. So can't wait for you guys to check it out. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Yay. It's oh. amazing. <laughs> it really Love good. it. Very good. Oh, wow. <laughs> Karen, you're one of those I did. I do mine real light because that's the way I like it. So I like a really light base to my and my hair looks really weird. Um, really light base to my um, lipstick, but that's what I love is that you can wear it bold and bright, or you can wear it a little bit different. So, yeah. oh, you guys are so nice. They are loving the lip colors and loving the tips. <laughs> yes, yes. All right. Awesome. Well, Sandy is going to. Yeah take it away and show us how to go from day to night and special little extra too all right yeah. okay so first we're going to talk about okay so we did our brows okay so i used oops i think i might have forgot brow tint on the other one <laughs> as you can see it makes a big difference <laughs> this one Okay, so what we're gonna do now is if you wanna make it a little more dramatic, now you can see this is the, the eye, I have the fake eyelashes on. We have fabulous mascara, but I just wanna show you the difference. Okay, so if you are going out, this is something you could do if you're going from day till night, okay? So, what, oh, I better get a mirror. Okay, so I, what I have here is our concealer. So this is, you're gonna kind of go based on what your skin tone is and then maybe a little bit lighter. So we want to kind of frame the brows now. So what I'm gonna do is go up here a little bit, okay, like that. And then we're going to come under here a little bit just to make them a little bit more perfecto and more crisp. So you're just taking a concealer with our concealer brush. This cream brush is awesome. Um, I use this for a lot of things. I use this for our um, cream eyeshadow that we have that's new. Um, you want to use this for your concealer so it blends in a little bit better. Um, and you're using your fingers less, especially now with COVID. We don't want to be touching our face too much, right? And then I'm going to take this sponge. It's a little bit damp. And we're going to blend that so you can't see too much. So blending is the key, right? Okay, so... Let me just do a little bit more on the other side so you can see, since I have brow tint on the other one and not this one. Okay, so just to give you another quick, so we're gonna go there and there, it really only takes a few minutes. This is just to make your brows, and you could actually, this says nighttime, but you could actually do this in the daytime too. So we're gonna just blend it, blend, blend, blend. So just to make them look a little bit more crisp, okay? I don't really feel like anybody's born with perfect brows and they do take a little bit of work, but I feel like they are a forgotten feature on our faces, right? <laughs> Sometimes they're forgotten. We don't brush them, we don't tweeze them, especially now, like with Karen said, um, during COVID, we're kind of, you know, haven't been able to really maintain and have people um, doing the things that we like to have done to ourselves. So we have to figure that out a little bit, right? Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you quick. This was just a fun little thing I thought I would share with you because it wasn't until somebody shared some little tips with me about how to apply fake eyelashes that I actually would even try putting them on. I mean, my actual um, mascara works super great for Mary Kay and I do use our eyelash um, building serum so that actually does help my lashes to be thicker and longer so if you're struggling with that um, you can ask your beauty consultant about our lash building serum that will help your lashes to be thicker so you can kind of see my normal lashes so what I'm going to do is before I started my lashes 
okay, before I put my lashes on, now other people might do it another way. I usually line my eyes, eyes with our, this is our, we talked about this before. This is our waterproof eyeliner pen and I love it. And I just do little feathery strokes right on top of my lash line. I'm only going to do the top. Okay, because eyeliner actually thickens your lash line. So I'm just going to do it there just to give me frame. So what this does is when I put my eyelashes on, I don't want to have a skip mark. So this actually will lash that little um, or connect the barrier between my actual real lash line and my fake lashes when I put them on just so that they blend better. Okay, so I highly recommend this waterproof eyeliner pen. Now, when picking your lashes, you kind of have to decide what you want. What brand doesn't really matter. In fact, my little secret is right after Halloween, um, they have all the eyelashes on sale at Walmart. <laughs> and you can pick all different kinds to play around with. And they're usually half price or 75% off. So depending on what you want, okay, these ones are called Kiss. So these ones are flirty. Actually, they're kind of... Um, this is a Kiss brand, and I do believe I got these at Walmart. So these ones you can see are a little wispier, so you might like wispy lashes. Um, maybe this is actually something more like you. This one's called Ritzy. All right, so you can see how it's shorter and then goes to longer. And then if you find one that you really like, you can buy them in a five pack. Okay, these ones are actually the ones I'm doing now. These are actually called, these are Ardell. These are ones that I got at Sally's, okay? So they're all, these are strip lashes. And then if you really like to be really, really um, glamorous, these are also another brand. These are Ardell also, but you can see the difference. These are really full. So it just kind of depends what you like. I probably should have chose the fuller ones for tonight so that you could really see the difference. Um, and then if you're not really sure you want to do the strip lash, they do also have these. These are little pieces. And just so that you know, they're in strips of, there's little threes. I tried separating the first time I was using them. Don't separate them. They stay together. So they come in little strips of three. And then you get a small, a medium, and a large. So if you want to just fill in your natural lashes, um, just so you have a little more fullness and not really have a strip, because some people are uncomfortable with the strip lashes, you can just pick these up and actually you can take the smaller, shorter ones and put them there. <laughs> and then obviously as you, you want the longer ones to be out here. Okay, so we would go shorter and then medium and then long. So that's why there's different sizes here. Okay, um, these actually you can pick them up with these little tweezers. So not regular tweezers. These are plastic. You don't want to have that metal stuff near your eyes. So this is really cool tool. It comes with most of the eyelashes. So it has a little rubber tip that can kind of you can work and push them in there. So I'll show you what I mean in a minute. But this is actually pick them up out of here so that you can place them on there. So let me just share with you a quick little tip. There's two different glues. So if you are doing the little strip or sorry, the little pieces, you are going to want this kind of glue. And it says right on the box, whether it's for individual lashes or if it's for strip lashes. Okay. Duo is one of my favorite kinds of glues for eyelashes. And then Ardell, I have, it was the same brand as the little um, pieces that I got. So the key is have some kind of little um, now, Mary Kay, we have these little plastic trays. So I usually put the glue in the tray and let it dry a little bit. You want it to be tacky, not fully dry, but you don't want it to be fully wet when you put it on your eye. So I've already put one on. So I'm going to grab this off here. I'm going to use my little tool to get it off of here. Now, if whoop, you can see what I'm doing. You're just going to, don't be nervous because it's actually stuck on there. So it actually has a little bit of glue on there already. So usually when we're trying to measure, now listen, everybody's eye shape is different. So you might have smaller eyes than somebody else, and this lash strip is not going to fit your eye. You actually may need to trim it. So before I actually even put glue on, I want to see if this is going to be long enough, okay? So you test it to see. Okay, that's falling off a little bit. So I know that this one fits my eye because I've already tried it. But if it was too long for you, you would take little tiny scissors and you can trim them. Now, if you want them to be more natural, 
you're going to trim from the long end. If you want them to be more glamorous, you're going to trim from the shorter end. So you pretty much are going to, I think you can see that. Okay. So what we're going to do now, I know this fits my lid. If I had to cut it, I would have cut it, but now I'm going to take my glue. Okay. And I'm going to show you what to do with this here. So you're going to take the glue out. It's on this little little thing and you're going to kind of put it on the last strip now i prefer black glue okay there is other colors you've probably seen white glue they also have clear glue now so you could use clear i still like black because i wear black eyeliner and i feel like it makes you look like you have eyeliner on on top of just having lashes so totally your choice i'm just kind of filling this in okay so all you're doing is you're dipping and going right on the strip okay so we're going like that now. Okay, it takes a little bit of practice to get this going. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to actually just kind of blow on this a little bit because you don't want it to be completely wet when you put it on. So let's say you do put too much glue on and you get it on in the wrong spot. This glue actually will pick off after it dries. Okay, now, sorry, I have to use my, hopefully this will work okay. Okay, good, see me. Okay, so. We're going to pray to God that I get this in the right spot. So usually I kind of go from the middle and then push it down. So I'll start in the middle. I think if you go to the middle and then you get it on there. Now, that tool is important, okay? This little tool, okay? So we're going to take this little tool now, the little rubber end, and we're going to push it where we want it. So you're just pushing it onto your lash line. Okay, so see how I got that? Okay, that's why I like the black glue because the black glue, blue, <laughs> black glue looks like eyeliner, right? So remember, we started with eyeliner. All right, we're gonna give this a minute to dry and then I'm gonna show you what else I do. So people will ask, well, do you wear mascara with it? Well. If you don't need to, you, you don't have to, less is best, right? But let's just say I want to blend, like maybe you have straighter eyelashes. Maybe you want to blend it a little bit better. I'm going to wait on that one because it's drying. So you can take your regular mascara and blend your real eyelashes with the fake ones, okay? So when this dries a little bit more, I don't want to mess with it right now, I will put some more mascara on there, okay? So you can do that. I also will take maybe some more eyeliner if I feel like I want to push this in a little bit more. That's why this eyeliner is awesome when you have fake eyelashes on. So I envy you guys that go and get your lashes filled all the time. I just don't like to pay the extra expense, <laughs> nor do I have. Um, I, I just don't have time well let's just say if it was really super important i would make time to go do it because we make time for the things that are important for us right so pretty much i actually if i really 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 loved them and wanted to have them on i would make time to do it so i really am envious of those of you that do it but i actually when i want a little bit of extra will just use my little strip lashes so let me just tell you i have tons and tons of kinds of them and you have to play with them they're really not as bad or as hard as you think they are. You just have to A, get the right glue. You have to pick the right one that you want. Remember that you can trim them if you want to. Um, you can use your eyeliner with them, but I would use a waterproof one. This one is waterproof, so you'll want to get that. You can use your mascara with them to make them look more natural um, and just have the right glue and the right tools. So you need your tools and you need... Um, just to practice, practice, practice. So maybe practice on your friends if you want to, but you really, when you're doing it to yourself, it's a lot different than when you're doing somebody else's. So I just love them. I think they just add a little bit of extra when we go to awards night at seminar. Uh, they're always fun to have. So, um, so that's my little trick with your glamorous nighttime look. So that's that. What do you think? All right. <laughs> Love it. So I have on here, um, oh, or Sandy, do you want to talk about the picture? Sure. Okay. So what we have for you is our, now we've been doing, obviously there's four quadrants on there. So we've been teaching you about the different quadrants, but today it has the cute little 
um, compact, which you can you can fill with whatever you want. Mine has two bronzers, a light and a dark for contouring and highlighting. But as you can see in that one, you can put your bronzer or you can put your contour, you can put your highlight and your cheek color all in one little spot. And then what you don't see on there is this beautiful little brush that you can use to do all of these things. So like Danita taught us, you can use, it's a three-in-one brush. So we have a four-in-one cleanser. This is our three-in-one brush. This is an amazing brush. Um, it has the one end where you're going to do your contouring, and it has the other end where you're going to do your highlighting, and then the middle part is where you do your cheeks. So this is our three-in-one brush, which is not on there. So ask your consultant how you can get that. Um, also in that collection is your brow gel, your eye brow defining pen, your lip liner, your favorite lipstick, and of course your eyeliner pen, which is amazing. And then the spoolie brush, which is definitely a must for doing your eyebrows. So ask your consultant about what her special is for that. Awesome. All right. Oh, well, so much fun. Yeah. Okay, so we are actually um, going to now, we're gonna wrap up today, but don't forget, a couple quick reminders. You wanna make sure that you fill out a survey. So listen, we do appreciate all your feedback. We know we had a little faux pause today. Um, <laughs> anytime there's technical issues, there could be faux pas, but we are just real, we're fun with, we do this because we have a good time. We hope you got some hot tips. So if there's something else you would like to see us do on one of these events, surely make sure you put that in the survey. So your consultant will send you a survey to fill out for a $150 spa drawing. And then we also actually will have you stay on if you'd like to earn a free lip gloss, because we are going to share some more fun facts about if you've ever pondered pink, like would, would you want to join our little crew here and do these fun kind of things? We get to play with makeup for a job. I love it. Um, I do appreciate all of you that are out there working these COVID circumstances in the hospitals and our first responders. And we need people like you. But if I were to do something like that, I would faint on the floor. So thank you to those of you who do that. But my my biggest passion here is helping you to feel better on the outside so you feel better on the inside and just to pamper you ladies. So we're going to share some facts about have you ever pondered pink? So if you want to stay on, we would love to have you stay on with us. Make sure that you comment so that we know that you're hanging with us. This is our secret little have you ever pondered pink session. So we're excited about this. Yay. Yay. All right. So we're going to actually, oh, and next week is our pro touch-ups, by the way. So if you want to join us next Tuesday at 8.15, we're doing pro touch-ups. Okay, so we're going to about start with our, um, have you ever pondered pink? Yeah, so. this is so exciting. And I saw um, the comment just that just flashed up from Genevieve, and she just announced that she decided to start her business. So yay, Genevieve, yay. we're so excited to have you. Um, so if you're here with us in the after party, make sure you say hi, because your after party gets you a gift. So make sure you let us know that you're here. Um, and then I want you to grab something that's around you, a piece of paper or anything that you can put a plus sign on, just a giant plus sign. Um, you can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it a giant plus sign, right? So you have four quadrants. Um, and we're going to quickly, in just a quick few minutes, tell you what each of the quadrants are um, that, thank you, Ryan. She must have <laughs> put something ready. <laughs> yeah, that was so fancy. Oh, God. Oh, right on my notebook. <laughs> I'm going to have you put, um, I'm going to have you put these words in each quadrant. So that way you can then write down a couple facts about each of the quadrants. And at the end, we're going to have you circle the quadrants that most relate to you. So the first quadrant is going to be financial freedom. So in the first square, you can put financial freedom. In another square, any square, it doesn't make a difference which one it is, you can put flexibility. And then you can put into the next one, you can put whatever Ryan does, family. And then the last one, of course, is fun and friends. So those are going to be the four things we're going to talk about real quick with you so that you can kind of see a little peek, a little peek pink into pink. So anyways, the first quadrant is financial freedom. And um, that basically is just how we earn money in Mary Kay. So um, some people, you know, people join for each of the different quadrants. So the financial freedom is how we make money. So um, 
there's three ways we can do that. The first way is by sharing our products, just like we do with you weekly and daily, face to face, virtually. Um, people can you know try them in the comfort of their own home or however they want to. And we earn 50% commission on all products that we um, sell to you. So that's a really fun way to make money. So I know what you're doing right now. You're tallying up all the money that you've spent with your beauty consultant. <laughs> it's not a secret. That is how that's the first way we make money. The second way we earn an income with Mary Kay is by um, when we help mentor women into leadership. So as you join, as you start your business and you start to be comfortable and you're excited about sharing what you do with other women, you will then be paid by Mary Kay because they're assuming that you're working and helping and mentoring those women um, to their own success, as well as your director that you're with. So those two, those are two of the ways that we earn income with Mary Kay. The last way we earn income with Mary Kay, and girls, if there's something I'm forgetting, chime in, um, is through our car program, which is a really unique and exciting program. Um, we have more free cars on the road, more earned free cars on the road than any other company. Um, well, second to the Army. That's okay. They can have first place. Um, so we have those, those cars. And the reason that becomes an extra source of income, aside from selling our product and sharing it, um, we share it with people and then they decide they love it and they want to purchase it. And then we help other women start their business. And when you earn a car, then you get the choice of taking the car and the company will pay 87.8%, I say 80% of your car insurance, um, or you can take a cash compensation and that depends on the level that you're at. So it starts at 425 for the compensation. That's a monthly compensation for two years. Then it bumps up to 500. And then as a pink Cadillac car driver, you can take the car and the insurance or you can take um, $900 a month. So in the comments, if you're watching, cause you're gonna let us know you're here, you can put a car if you take the car and put the money sign if you would take the money instead of the car. So I love that Mary Kay gives us options um, because that's what we love. So how does that become your income? Well, if you're not dishing out four, five, six, seven hundred dollars for a lease or a car payment, that is extra money that you have in your pocket um, for your family. So those are the ways that we um, earn money in Mary Kay and it provides, you know, so Mary Kay has no ceiling. You can work as much or as little and um, you can really achieve a level of financial freedom and, and not financial freedom so much. And, you know, I only do this for the money, but wouldn't it be nice to have extras, extras for college, to save for college tuition, extra for family vacations, extras for whatever you want. Like what is your extra thing that you would like to have a little bit more for? Because if you're not stressed um, and your budget, your, you know, your budget's a little bit looser, it provides more joy for you and the people around you. Awesome. Is there anything you wanted to add to that? <laughs> No, that was perfect. Great job. Great. All right. So that was the financial freedom quadrant. And then I'm going to talk to you about flexibility. Um, so when I started Mary Kay, I didn't realize I would love flexibility as much as I do now. And I think I've become a whole lot more busier now. Um, so just to give you an example. So I started Mary Kay. I was working full time um, and my daughter was at two, she's eight now. Um, so yeah. <laughs> um, and then I was working for my dad's business part time. Um, but I was his office manager. So I had control of when I wanted to work. Um, and then I loved Mary Kay because I could keep doing all the things I was doing. Um, and I didn't have to give up anything. And then as I worked harder in my business, I promoted myself and then I became a sales director. And then I was laid off from my mortgage job. So I had the flexibility to work Mary Kay more. Um, and what's great is that I can choose to work. Um, I call my dad's office my satellite Mary Kay office. So I can choose to work there. I can choose to work at my home. Um, I can go to Starbucks and work there. Um, I love it too because my daughter, I'm a single parent now. So my daughter is in swim and Girl Scouts and I'm the troop leader and I do B work for my dad. So I have a lot going on, but I love it because I can focus on what I want to do and work when and where I want to. So, I mean, I don't know where you can choose your work schedule, the days you want to work, the times, like 
you know, without, you know, being a Mary Kay, like it's amazing. I love it. I love that I don't have to give up anything mm -hmm. um, and I can do the things that I want to do when I want to do them. So um, that's flexibility. And I am so grateful for flexibility. So Danita is going to share with us next. Okay. I just want to share a little bit with you about what it's like for a family when you are um, in Mary Kay. And it kind of intertwines with what Karen and Ryan have already said about uh, the flexibility, because when you have the flexibility, you can be there for your family, uh, which I have always loved in the 29 years um, that I've been in the business. My kids were young and they were ages seven through 13 when I first started my business and they were into everything. I mean, like Ryan said, um, so you, the beauty of it is you can be there for your family. And I don't mean that you, you set everything aside with Mary Kay, but you can intertwine it. And um, in fact, when you go to the ball games and, and you talk, talk with the other moms and, and, um, you know, it's a, it's a great uh, way to network as well. Um, that when you're exposed to so many people, when you're out and about, uh, people that you've never met. Um, I had just moved here from Tulsa, Oklahoma, a few months prior to starting my Mary Kay business. And so I met a lot of people at uh, my kids' events. And that was one of the ways that I was able to even build my business. Um, but the family everything about Mary Kay is for our family and um, more cash for what it is that we either supplies for the kids for schools or their events, things that they've got going on like that. Um, or just, or the time to be with them at, like I said, at the ball games and, and as Ryan is with uh, scouts with her, with her daughter. Um, that's all about family. The cars are such a great asset for your family as well, because uh, again, you, you're you're displacing the money you would normally spend on a car and you're able to put it where you want it. Um, maybe you even need new furniture uh, for your home. So anything like that. And another thing, too, that I think makes a big difference is um, as you grow in Mary Kay, as you not only grow your business, but you personally grow yourself with confidence when your family sees that, it makes a really big difference in how they too feel about what they can do. So uh, when they see you working your business, uh, meeting new people and building and going out the door and you're committed um, to your business, that sets a very good example for your children. And, um, and it not only helps them grow up differently, but it also um, helps them be very proud of, um, of you. And then as a result, very proud of who they've become as a result of it. So I think it has a great deal of effect on, on families by being a Mary Kay. Awesome. Oh, he's muted. Sandy, we can't hear you. <laughs> I got it. Sorry. <laughs> ah, so, uh, Danita, I love that because you know what I was just thinking to myself? It reminded me of, okay, so those of you that are here may have heard my story before, but I had a nightmare one time that there was no more Mary Kay. Oh, like, Mary Kay closed the doors and I woke up with heart palpitations because I've been doing Mary Kay for a long time and I've never had to wake up to an alarm clock. I can take vacation when I want to. I work when I want to, as hard as I want to, or as less as I want to. And when I woke up, you could imagine like after having all that flexibility and freedom and free cars and money when I want it. And if I need more money, I can make more of it. <laughs> I woke up going, oh, what am I going to do? And I'll tell you what, I was a recruiting machine that year because I thought there is nothing better <laughs> than this opportunity. It is a fairy tale life that we live. And um, some of you might be like, oh, I would never do sales. Like none of us thought we would do sales either. We just like to have a good time. We like our skin to look healthy. We yeah. like to look and feel good. And I think every woman out there does. So all of you naturally are salespeople. 
Like you, if you're married, you sold your husband on yourself. Um, you just naturally sell your friends on what you're excited about. So really selling is just a transfer of your own beliefs. So if you feel like, oh God, I don't want to do sales. You really need to listen with an open mind and open heart and just think to yourself, what could my life be like if I could take a vacation every single month for a week? That was one of my goals one year. I was like, I'm going to take a vacation every month. Like you should yeah. Yeah, yes. <laughs> every time I turned around, you were gone somewhere. <laughs> yeah, it was great to be able to do that. But like Danita was saying with your kids, like I, I thought, oh my gosh, I've been so blessed to be able to be home and get my kids on the bus and off the bus every single day since they started school. And I was always here, always homeroom mom. So those were great points. But um, my point tonight is about fun and friends. And honestly, um, you know, because of choices I made or we've moved or whatever's happened in our lives. I am not as close to my friends that I had in high school, but I will tell you that any of my friends that use Mary Kay, I'm close to simply because they have to call me because they need their product. So I do love the fact that I see more of my friends and family because they need product and I have a need or I can fill a need that they have. So that actually has been such a true blessing that um, I'm able to provide that service for them, but also keep my relationships going. So where else can you go and like intermingle it with your friends and families and gatherings and at Thanksgiving we all get together and all the guys all the girls everybody comes together and does satin hands and satin lips and tries all the new products that are coming out for the holidays so it truly has been um, a joy to be able to, to have my friends and family be part of that but then the friends I've developed along the way. Now, of course, I've been in Mary Kay for 26. Danita's been in for 29. And Karen and Ryan have always been a part of my journey because they came in as I was already in Mary Kay. And it's so fun to be able to work with people who have the same mindset. Like you encourage each other to go farther. And I remember working in corporate America, like you don't want to tell anybody your secrets because you're all fighting to get to the top. So I couldn't tell her what I was doing. She couldn't tell me what she was doing. Everyone was backstabbing and I'm like, what the heck is going on? I don't like this. So I loved in Mary Kay that if I have an idea and Karen has an idea and Ryan has an idea and Danita has an idea, we all work together. You guys, we all have our own separate business, but we pull together and we work together and make it fun. And it's been such a true, true, true joyful business that we can um, choose who we work with and that we we stretch each other to grow. So I feel like friends and fun in Mary Kay is really one of the top things on my list because if you don't have joy in your life, you need to figure out something that brings you joy. You guys, you spend probably at least a third of your life working. And if it's not bringing you joy in the life that you love, it's time to reconsider because I'll tell you the pain of pushing through our fears to do what we do. And sure, there's probably people laughing at us like, what are those girls doing? But you know what? We laugh all the way to the bank. I don't care. Like, <laughs> I'm happy. I have a flexible schedule. I drive a free car. I can't get a new car every two years. Like, who gets that? <laughs> so fun and family, um, get over your fears and just try something different if you're stuck. Or maybe, maybe you just have more month of money and you need to just do something a little extra here and there, but everything you do pays you over and over and over again. So I still have the same customers. So do these ladies from when we very first started Mary Kay. So fun and family. And I was thinking to myself, those of you that have another job, see, I can't keep my glasses on because my lashes are too long. <laughs> my glasses. But how many of you work another job where you have some friends there that you like, but how many of you'd like to get rid of some of them? Like, God, if they weren't here, it would be so much better. Like, I used to feel that way. Like if that girl was not here, this job would be way more fun. So I love that we get to pick who we work with. It's just a true joy. So we're just going to wrap it up by maybe covering some concerns that you might have. Okay. So as I mentioned, fear, we've all had fear. Like fear is just a thing in life. Anytime you're doing something new, you're going to have fear. Okay. But this is, like I said, the college improvement class that you get paid to take so it's a really a great opportunity for that. You might say, who would I sell to? I don't know. All of my friends and family, I don't know. They don't like makeup or maybe, um, I don't know, maybe I'm your consultant and you're like, well, she already services them. Well, <laughs> we're going to teach you how to start with friends and family, but immediately move beyond that. Um, we love our friends and family, but we want to teach you how to build a real business. And every day there's teenagers that become women and they are going to need what you have. And Mary Kay every year is building more um great technology, great products, and we are going to be around forever. We've been around for almost six 
decades, you guys. That's a long time. It stood the test of time through many recessions. Um, they always say in a recession, the three things that sell are booze, cigarettes, and makeup. And I'm sure you can beg to differ. That has been the case <laughs> through this past couple of months with COVID. We need our makeup to make us feel better. And I'd rather have a drink with all this stress going on than a loaf of bread. I don't know. That's just me, but maybe a lot of you too. <laughs> so that is actually something that is really great about Mary Kay. It stood the test of time. I've been in for almost three decades. So has Danita. And I've seen things happen. And Mary Kay has really, really learned to pivot and grow through the changes. It's always for the right time. Um, what about time? Maybe you don't have a whole lot of time. Well, you know what? During this COVID, some of you either had way more time or you had way less time, right? But really seriously, if you only have a couple hours a week that you could squeeze in, that would get you an extra 150 to $300 a week. So if your boss said to you, hey, Karen, will you work three hours this week? I'm going to give you 150 or $300. Would you do it? You would find three hours, I'm sure, right? <laughs> so you would find the time, as I said, if it's a priority, you'll make time for it. And maybe you don't have the money to get started, which we didn't tell you how much it costs to get started. Girls, who wants to share how much it costs to get started? I will. Okay. So there's three <laughs> options, actually. So um, we have an awesome kit, starter kit that is made for the times that we're in. And it can, you can start a Mary Kay business for $30. And that will get you all the tools you need to work your business virtually. Then we have our traditional starter kit, which is $100, and you get full retail size product, and it's almost $400 worth of product. Um, if you like both options, you can combine them and get both the virtual and the regular starter kit for $130. So three different options for what you, whatever mood you're feeling. Yeah, so yeah. that goes along with what I was saying. Like some of you might be like, well, I don't have an extra $30 or an extra $100 to start. And Mary Kay, if she was alive, she would say, and how long do you want your situation to be that way? Like it's time to fix something. It's time to make a change. You are in charge. You can make a change. So I promise you either your $30 investment, your $100 investment, or the $130 if you want the whole shebang could maybe not do a whole lot for you, but maybe it could change your whole situation financially, emotionally, everything. Um, I just love the fact that Mary Kay teaches us how to have a really full prioritized life. So we are going to, for anybody that makes a decision to start their own business, and obviously you may have questions, so feel free to comment on here. Um, in fact, we forgot to ask if, and if we only had five minutes to tell you about Mary Kay, what questions would you have? So if you're still here with us, and you have a question, please feel free to type it in the comments and we'll make sure that we answer. But we have a little bribe gift for you. We call it a sign on bonus, but it's really a bribe. We like to bribe you because women like gifts, right? So I was always one who worked for bribes. So like if there's something free for me, I'm in. So we have this beautiful, I've got mascara and glue all over my hands. Let me put it in this, in this box. <laughs> I had a little messy situation with my lashes. Okay, here we have this beautiful pink ice ring. Okay, I don't know if you can tell it's pink. Okay, now you might be like, wow, that is a great little sign on bonus. Is it real? Well, let me tell you, it's summer diamonds. Okay, so you're going to pinky promise me you will never share with someone what a summer diamond is unless they're in Mary Kay. A summer diamond means some are real and some are not. So you will get to decide if you pick the one with the real diamonds or not. But we're going to let you pick your pink ice ring um, when you make your decision within 24 hours. So you have until 920. Well, we'll say 930. I'll give you an extra two minutes. 930 tomorrow evening, which is Wednesday. You let us know. Yes. I would love to start something different. I'm sick of my situation. I need some more fun in my life. I need some more money in my life. I have a need to be home with my kids, whatever your situation is. Um, if you would like to give it a try, I'm sure you've spent $30 before. I'm sure mm -hmm. you've spent $100 before. So it's not going to be a decision that's like getting married or having a baby. You can get out as easy as you get in. And we did forget to mention there's no quotas, no territories, which is amazing when you have a home-based business like this. So no quotas, no territories. You can sell as much or as little as you want to. You could be a smart shopper, which means 
you love a discount and maybe um, you're going to get your own product at a great discount, but maybe you're going to share it with some friends and family and maybe get it for free. That would be even better, right? Um, maybe you just want to do a little side hustle. Maybe you just like, well, I'll try it for a couple hours a month. I could use the extra $200 to go school shopping for school supplies. Or maybe you're like, you know what? I freaking hate my job and I really need to change. Like maybe you want to be a boss, babe. Like, you know, maybe that's what you're looking for. Any way you want to start, we're willing to work with you. So in the comments, you can put whether you would like to try this as a smart shopper, as a side hustle, or a girl boss boss babe, girl boss, whatever you prefer to call it. So, and we do have the bribe. Okay. All right. So we're going to wrap it up with that. You're going to receive a, um, an extra drawing into our $150 or an extra entry into our $150 spa drawing. If you fill out the extra survey, which your director or your consultant will let you know where that is because we each have our own website. So we'll tell you where to find that. So if you're still on, give us a little thumbs up or write a question or write what your decision is, what your questions are. Do we have any questions, Ryan? Uh, no, not right now. No questions. Okay. Well, if you think of questions, make sure you get a hold of your consultant, but we thank you for your time. And if you've ever pondered pink, look us up. Okay. <laughs> have a good night. Bye. Bye. <laughs>